G'day guys, Ben here from Pumped on Property and welcome to another episode of our Pumped on Property Show podcast. Now today I sit down with my sister Crystal to talk about the three strategies that we've found from talking to over 5,000 investors that actually work. Now one of them is about buying good quality assets at the right time of the cycle that you can add some value to through renovation. Second idea is one that I love personally and that's going out there and buying a nice big piece of land in an established suburb close to the city or the beach and building a big house with a secondary dwelling so that you can not just get long-term growth, but you can also get great cash flow and great tax benefits from your depreciation report as well. Um, and then I talk about the third thing that Crystal and I have both done as well, which is just buying incredibly high quality, tenant ready assets that you can just set and forget for the next five or 10 years and then come back and do some cool stuff too in the future when you're ready to. But this podcast is a really, really good one. We talk about many of our own experiences in terms of the properties we bought, what we paid for them, what we did to them, what we sold them for. Um, it really is a masterclass in the three ideas that actually work in 2024 in Australia. Beautiful Chris, welcome back to the Pump John Property Show. <laughs> I know, it's been a little while, I don't know, maybe a year or so since we've caught up on one of these. Like a proper, proper sit down potty. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really grateful and excited. Like obviously you've bought more than 500 properties for our clients, probably mm -hmm. what, three, $350 million worth of property just on your own. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, about that, if you say so. Well, I don't think any um, female under the age of 35 in Australia has ever done something like that on her own before. Um, mm. And then obviously you bought, what, four, five properties five. with your partner, Matt? Yeah. Um, as well, which is cool. But in today's episode, um, as always, I'm sort of throwing you on the spot. <laughs> we haven't really done too much prep for this one. No. Um, but I did want to go deep into like the three strategies that you and I have personally applied that really work. Yeah. By really working, we want properties that go up at the right time of the cycle, yep. shorter to medium term. Mm -hmm. Properties with great long term potential in terms of growth. Yeah. Um, you know, on top of that, some of these strategies will want cash flow, some tax benefits as well. Yep. Um, and as always, we want to apply the fundamentals of things that we work. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go deep, but the first strategy is one that you've done really successfully yep. on pretty much every property you've got. Um, so that is buying a place with the potential has always been to hold them longer term, yep. but your life stage has changed. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, renovating them for profit and either keeping them yep. or selling them. So mm. let's talk about that. Yeah. So I guess when my husband and I first met and sort of established the fact that we both had an interest in buying properties, he's a chippy. So obviously we had a natural interest in building, renovating that side of things. So really the first property we bought ended up being our own home for a little while, um, but we approached it still with that investor mindset, a good block of land. Um, it was over 650 square meters in size, walking distance to the ocean here on the Sunshine Coast. We picked the ugliest possible property in the best possible location <laughs> that we could afford at that time. What we liked about it was the size of the home. So we knew we were going to renovate it. We didn't want small pokey bedrooms, an odd layout or anything like that. We wanted the house to be positioned well on the block. So those sorts of things we approached with the idea that we would have, whether it was an investment property or our own home, those sort of things that you can't easily change when it comes to a renovation. We knew we wanted things that we could cosmetically upgrade like undone kitchens, unrenovated bathrooms, those sorts of things where we could quite easily add value through his skill set. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the floor plan, the size of the home, those sorts of things were non-negotiable for us. We didn't want a weird sized home or anything like that that wasn't then going to look good, even if it was polished up. I love that. And it did, you know, we spent a lot of time there. Obviously it did have like a nice big kitchen, living, dining yep. onto a deck, yep. um, good sized bedrooms. Yeah. Um, and one of the craziest things that I've ever heard that you guys did was as you went to fill in downstairs, um, it was below legal <laughs> height and Matt sanded back the battens and the rafters so that he could get it to legal height and then yep. he filled in what with another two bedrooms down there plus another kitchenette and living area. Exactly too. right. So I think 
three, the three main properties we've renovated over the course of our renovation history have all been legal height or very close to legal height downstairs. So this particular one, I think was just shy, like I'm talking millimeters, but <laughs> only in like half of it. So to get the ceiling height all even throughout and everything like that, you had to plane back a couple of ceiling oh, patterns. Oh my gosh, I can't um, imagine how hard work that would be. I know, it was legal height till we had to like art at the floor and like level it out and everything like that. So yeah, we, we polished that up. We added living room that opened out to its own little patio on the lower level. Mm. Upstairs had a huge deck. Um, out the front, we put like a new wraparound veranda, new fencing. A lot of those things that increased the street appeal of the property, um, changed the color scheme throughout to something quite coastal and modern with like white fittings and finishes. I think in that particular home, we chose like black tapware and went with that style. Barn style um, kitchen wasn't yeah, it? Like, it was yeah, really cute. Yeah, it was really, really cute. So that home did really well for us. Obviously we bought at a really good time and an affordable time of the cycle. Um, but mainly we just delayed that gratification. A lot of our friends were looking to buy what they thought was their dream home, mm -hmm. finding the nicer property, that sort of thing. We bought something and it took us a while to save up to renovate. I think we bought it in 2000 and 15 maybe and it wasn't till 2018 till we actually had the money to renovate we chipped away at a few things that we could here and there on weekends but it was really 2018 that the house took shape and part of that was also we wanted to acquire other properties in the meantime so we bought that home held off on the reno while we decided to buy another two investment properties in Brisbane which had the same approach something we could renovate long term as well mm -hmm. So I'm just trying, do you mind if we go deeper into like what you paid for it and yeah. what you sold it for and the hold period? So what did you pick that up for back then? Um, so we bought the property for $440,000. In what year roughly? Um, 2015 or six, maybe early 2016. I can't even remember, honestly. Yeah. Like it feels yeah. like a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah. um, the details are a bit fuzzy these days, but I think it was about then, 2015, 2016. And you were about 26? Yep, I think so. Okay, yep. cool. And then you obviously did a whole lot of work, but you know, you paid for materials, but because your partner's a builder and because you're happy to get your hands dirty too, yep. you just did a lot of the work yourselves. And then when did you sell it and what for roughly? So we sold it in 20, 20, um, around COVID. So the reason we decided to sell it was to upgrade our principal place of residence at that time. An opportunity popped up. We just finished the reno. So it took us a few years to get the money to renovate. We spent kind of 2018 to 20, mid 2020 renovating, really the bulk of 2019. We would do it on weekends at night, that sort of thing. We didn't really take time off work to do it. It was really just a side project. Mm -hmm. Over the course of owning it, we probably put I'd say with that one only maybe 80 to 100K into it. We were really fortunate at the time. Build prices were still a bit, little bit cheaper. Material prices were a lot cheaper than they are today. Mm -hmm. And with Matt doing it, chipping away over time, definitely saved us money rather than having to trade time off work to do it. So yeah, I think maybe let's call it 90K that we would have spent on it. Mm -hmm. So bought it for 440, spent about 90 grand on the property um, and then sold it in about September 2020 um, for 775,000. Okay. Yeah. And what would it be worth now? And <laughs> <laughs> like just because I'm going to share a few of these stories as well, but just for the last. Don't like make me think it about a it. <laughs> yeah. And the property that you bought that you upgraded to has done significantly better than yeah. this tour of the wood of? Yeah, exactly. So that property still did really well for us at that stage of life. We had one child about to have our second. So we figured if we wanted to sell, that was the time to do it yeah. and basically repeat that same strategy. So we sold it and today it'd be worth about 1.2 mil, I would say, yeah. um, which is a little bit sad to think about, <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things. You yeah, live and you learn, a stepping stone but life. it was 100% a stepping stone. And that was always what it was. We sold it at that time because we found this other opportunity that just randomly popped up. It was never our intention to necessarily sell it that quickly, but we couldn't have dreamed of like the next step and what that opportunity was going to be either. Yeah. And so I think it's important, like the intent with everything you and I have ever bought is we're going to hold them long term. Yeah. But sometimes your life stage change. Like yeah. I've got three kids, you've got three kids. Yeah. Sometimes you need more space. Sometimes the vibe changes. Yeah. You know, that property was on a main road. Yeah. You probably don't want three kids that can jump fences and looking fences being <laughs> yeah. able to walk out there. A hundred percent. And so, and also COVID came through. And so houses on the Sunshine Coast, 
um, the Sunshine Coast didn't go down mm. by more than 10%, but certain properties where no one was looking for that first nine months were really cheap. And yep. so it was sort of one of those things where it was like, now or never to move to more of a dream home. Exactly. And you took the shot. So I suppose that strategy that we've both used that has worked was buy a home that we saw more as an investment. Yep. That we sort of chose to live in too. Yeah. And then hold it for a period that makes sense. And either, you know, it becomes a home that you stay in forever or for both of us, we traded out of them into something that actually made more sense at that stage of life. Exactly right. Like it gave us the opportunity for more land, quieter street, um, bigger home, ability to put a pool in, all those things that are important as you have kids. And um, yeah, I was just really, really fortunate with the timing of both of those, buying that property in Mount Coulomb and it performing quite well and those more hinterland style properties not performing well in that COVID period. So the trade up was yeah, the, the disparity between that property and this property was a lot smaller than to what it is today. So pretty fortunate for that. You know, for that particular strategy, one of the examples that I've done that comes to mind um, was by, I'll, I'll talk about two of them. One was my very first property. I bought it for $310,000. <laughs> um, I called it the granny shack and it was a yeah. deceased estate. Um, I we, love that little house. I love that <laughs> it was little so house cute. too. It was so cute. Yeah. Similar thing when we bought it, um, it was where we could afford. We were pretty much surrounded by housing commission on mm. the Sunshine Coast. I used to laugh about it with my old boss because they built KFC at the end of the street. <laughs> and he's like, I'm not dropping you in the house, like in the house without, with stopping. Cause I'm like, I'm worried about my car getting jacked. <laughs> So he's like, you know, just jump out as I drive and we'd laugh we'll Slow down it. enough for you to open the door. Um, you know, fast forward to now, that property would be worth 850 to a million bucks at yeah. least. Yeah. Um, so at that time, it was my third property. I'd already bought two investments mm. first. Um, I had literally nothing. So I went from a really high paying job working away in North Queensland, <coughs> like in mining areas, to finding out my wife was pregnant and having yeah. our first bub and going from like a 200K a year salary to restarting a whole new career on 45K <laughs> plus sales comms yep. in a marketing agency because I wanted to learn how to market and I needed to come home. Yep. And so we had literally like $50 a week after our expenses of our three properties left over and we're on one salary. Mm. And I remember going to Bunnings and buying like a coat of paint and I'd paint, like we did the entire reno basically ourselves. Yep. Um, and we probably spent about 20, 30K at the time doing a new kitchen. I hand painted the bathrooms, hand painted the tiles on the roof. We did the gardens <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. I painted everything and we just had a heap of fun. I remember getting on the beers with Lisa and a mate for three days, painting the roof with paint brushes ourselves. Stuff. <laughs> I hate <laughs> painting. <laughs> I think it'd be fun with some beers though. <laughs> um, it was fun. Um, and then I ended up selling that property. Again, I was intent to stay there, mm. but we decided like a piece of land came up down the road and we liked the idea of building something ourselves. Yeah. And so we um, sold it for like $420,000. So we made like 100K yep. um, in a pretty short period of time. And then we went and split that and we bought a piece of land to build a home on for ourselves yep. and a piece of land to build a brand new dual income property in Brisbane. Yep. Um, and I look at that and I'm like, the strategy was the same, like big piece of land close to the beach in yep. an up and coming suburb renovation for profit yeah fast forward a few homes we did another one in Shelley Beach on yeah the sunny yep. coast. Um, bought that in about 2017 for 1.2 mil yeah um, did a 300k reno everything like gutted the house completely new kitchen bathrooms flooring yep. reshaped rooms and then did about another 50 60k outdoor reno too yeah um, and then we ended up holding that one just for three years and sold it for over two million bucks. Yeah, that was insane. So again, I think you're at the auction, maybe, or was I can't remember ever... if I came to the auction. I don't think I did. There was like twenty of our mates there mm. for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> we all end up just having a laugh and getting on the beers. Yeah. Um, I remember one of. I may after the auction. I definitely came afterwards, but wasn't there at the time. Yeah, I think Tristan came over, one of um, Siamese good friends, and he's like, you know, we're all younger. What have you learned from this experience? And I'm like, money doesn't make you happier. So start enjoying <laughs> with your life without yeah. cash. Yeah. But it was a big, it was a big, big, big jump for us. Yeah, like, exactly. I 
um, going like sheesh, like this idea of buying the right home. Again, it was a thousand square mm. meter block within 150 meters of the beach. Very, very unique home. Yeah. We turned it from a good home into a great home. It was insane. That Renault was amazing. I love that place. It yeah, was cool. still like my favorite place in terms of that upstairs bit that I've ever lived in. Like yeah, that it was kitchen cool. Lisa did was so fucking It was cool. really nice. Um, and the backyard, like the deck with the pool and the spa yeah. was just the vibe. It was good. Um, but again, like, yeah, it was just this, the strategy, the overarching idea that works is buying the worst home in the best street with the right land size in the right location mm. and then fixing it up to your taste and knowing that that will be someone else's if exactly. you ever sell it. Yeah, no, I love that. So... Yeah, like I, I'm really stoked with some of those decisions we've both been able to make, but something you touched on a little bit before was about buying land and building homes and that sort of thing. So I'd love to explore that with you a little bit further as well, because I know that's something that's worked really, really well for you, which I haven't had the opportunity of doing to date, but the idea of going out there, buying a good quality piece of land and potentially building a brand new home or a brand new kind of dual income home on it and how that looks. Yeah, I feel like I just talked too much in the last bit. So before I answer that, you've got a really great piece of land on the beaches in Brisbane that you yep. bought years ago. Like what's your intent with that one? Cause I think that perfectly aligns with this strategy. Yep. Obviously council plans have been changing, yep. but what does that look like? Cause is, is that going to be that sort of strategy for you? I would say so. Yeah. So about, I think it was the second or third, third property we ever bought. It was just like a two bedroom beach shack in a North Brisbane beachside suburb. Great um, such a good location. We're only about 150 meters from the water, but the good thing about where we are is the street slopes up and we're one of the first houses outside the flood zone. Mm. So there are houses more low lying than us. And I think that's gonna help with our choices for maybe development potential down the line. So we've just kept that house exactly as it is. It's like an original 1960s beach shack kitchen bathrooms are full out of another decade, out of another century. Um, <laughs> it's, it's actually really cute. And we've got good tenants in there. The couple that are living in there at the moment, the guys are chippy and they're just like in their twenties. So he pick, fix up anything that pops up over time, which is great for us. Um, but yeah, the intention for that, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, the intention it, with that one is, I think it's a 680 square meter block of land close to the water and long term we're just land banking that like the position that we're in with debt versus rental income we couldn't go out anywhere i think australia wide right now and buy land cheaper than what we got that for with a house on it so we're just land banking chipping away at principal and interest so that over time we're just getting that position down and down while we can afford to um and i think we will plan to knock it down and build a dual income home ideally the town plan is going to change and we go into a zoning area that allows like medium density, which means we can officially maybe duplex it or townhouse it or triplex it maybe. So just for people, a duplex is what we see in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, where there's two houses side by side with a, a wall connecting them yep. or separated, but like under an agreement. Yep. A triplex is just like three, three little townhouses. Townhouses two, essentially. And you can side. then go and strata each of them individually. So I would love if the town plan allows that. Right now it's just in like the low density residential zone, which does not allow the multiple dwellings being strated separately. But what it does allow and what will happen if nothing changes with the town plan is we knock down the house and build what's called like a dual occupancy home where you've got a main dwelling and your little sub dwelling all under the same roof line. So like a house and a granny flat, exactly. but brand new under one roof. Yeah, exactly. Generating two incomes, but can't necessarily be sold off separately or anything. So. I guess that's probably like a 10 year plan for us. I don't think we'd see ourselves doing anything with it between now and then. It's not costing us much to hold. It's sort of just sitting there. I think I'd like to make a couple more moves somewhat in the investment game. I don't know what they're gonna be over the next few years before we do that. And ideally the town plan changes to allow us to do something more um, developmentally on there, I guess. You know, what I love about this idea of investing is Things change. Yeah. Um, when you first bought it, the idea was to maybe do something sooner, but then mm. kids come along, life gets a bit more expensive, interest rates go from 2 to 7%, and yep. the idea changes. But if you've got the right site, whether you do something now or when you actually want the passive income, the tax yep. benefits and the freedom in the future, 
you can bring it forward that decision or you can postpone it for 10, 15, 20 years and decide exactly. what you want to do. Yeah. But I know that particular suburb was just in the financial review mm. and they, seven different analysts that were looking at it, um, which was one of uh, about 12 beachside suburbs in Brisbane on the north or the south, mm. was saying that it could go from about an 800K average price point now to about a 1.3 to 1.5 in eight years by the game. So yep. massive upside while you just sit on it and, you know, wait for things to change. Should be nice. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Access a bit of equity and then be able to do what I want to do. For sure. And I suppose like the land value, Simon's just sold his as a knockdown for yeah. 700K and it's further from the beach. So it it's pricing really well already as well. Exactly right. Yeah. Super stoked with how that one's going for us and haven't had to spend too much time or energy on it to date. Um, so that second strategy we were talking about, I've done four, actually I've done a lot more than four, but just in terms of building dual logs, I've done yep. four of them now, yep. which are houses with granny flats. I did sell one of them. I wish I didn't, but I was <laughs> freaked out having an anxiety attack and I was like, too much debt, too much pressure. Yep. I'm selling heaps of stuff. And yep. I'm like, oh, all that stuff doubled. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I know, but it's a stage of life stuff. Like you said, you're in the thick of having young kids then. Like you come out the other side of that. You're like, okay, I can breathe again. And yeah, it's, it is what it is in some of these situations. You know, so the second strategy that I use um, to create that actually works, I mm. suppose, like linking back to the title of this, is buying a piece of land. Yep and building a really, really cool, as one of my English mates in Sydney would say, fuck off house, <laughs> that's larger than average and nicer than average yep. with a one or a two bedroom granny flat out the back. Yep. Now, the reason I do this is not all the time, but you and I have seen this four times in nine years mm -hmm. in Sydney and Brisbane. What happens is existing houses get expensive Yep. and all of a sudden land and building looks really cheap. Like yeah. right now in Brisbane, you can build for the same price that you can buy a 40 year old home in these suburbs. It's yeah. fucking crazy. I know I've been doing the feasibility on some of these opportunities out there and you'd be so surprised like with where land value is at, existing home values and what you can do. Um, it's, it's insane. It's really exciting. We've seen this particular like thing happened what three four t four times I think times this will before. be the fourth time and like, it lasts yeah. for about six to nine months and then the market's not silly it goes oh you shouldn't be able to build a hundred square meter mm -hmm. bigger home in the same suburb for 50k more yeah and then all of a sudden like existing houses jump yeah so I've used that window the three previous times it's come up mm -hmm. and basically what I've done is I've gone and bought the land in a great location like generally 500 to 1000 square meter blocks yeah um in either quiet streets or, you know, if there's a bus route, I'm okay with that as well. But like quieter streets, either close to the city or the beach. Yep. Um, and I'll give you an example of one of them, like down there in Margate, bought it in COVID when everyone else was freaking out, kind of like everyone's freaking out at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's why this opportunity is back. Um, and then I went and bought, built a really large, like 250, 300 square meter, four bedroom home with two and a half bathrooms, big bedrooms yep. with its own nice big backyard. Now that property at the moment on its own is running for 800 bucks a week, I think. Um, maybe even more, yep. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> yep. But I know it's better than it was. Yep. And then the granny flat, which is a two bedroom granny flat with its own backyard, own um, parking area, is now running for like 450 or 470 a week. Could yep. rent for more, but I've got a great tenant. Yeah, I've just put my t lease up to 495 a week for my two bedroom shack. So your one that's brand new should be yeah. up there. <laughs> like well, they're going pretty my good these days. My rents are probably across my portfolio, 25 grand below what they could be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll bump them next year. Like yeah. it's, it's tough for people at the moment. Exactly. Like it's expensive and I'm waiting for everyone's incomes to jump 10% the next year. Mm. Um, so basically, it kind of looks like I'm getting about 1200 to 1300 bucks a week in rent. So 60 to 65 grand a year in rent. And then I got um, a company called BMT to come and do that tax depreciation report. Yep. And over like 30 or 40 years, I saved somewhere between about 15 to about 7K per year. Yep. So because it's so new, I'm getting about 300 bucks a week of tax back on that one property too. So yep. it takes the total return 
to like 1,600 a week or 80 grand a year on one property. Insane. And that property will also grow in value because it's in one of these beachside suburbs that we know the Olympics is coming up. Yep. And so that strategy is more for people that don't want to just like buy something and hold forever and lose money every week until they eventually own it outright in 30 years. It's more for people like me that want tax benefits, that want cash flow, that want capital growth, that want to time the market. And the unique thing is like the train line just opened up, the uni just opened yep. up, the Olympics is coming. So there's speculation. Yeah. And so that's more of an aggressive, my, my plan was to own three of them yep. and own them all outright, have 150 grand a year of tax not tax benefits, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be Actually, nice. sorry, I know you're not going to edit that out, Sam. <laughs> I wish. Um, 150 grand a year less tax would be amazing. Um, but I mean, sorry, 150 grand a year of passive, passive income. Passive income, yeah. Some tax benefits as well. And just a really high quality blue chip new property that's low maintenance that I don't have to think about. And that strategy yeah. is more like a neat bow. It's a bit more effort at the start, but a fuckload less effort for the 15 yeah. years after. We've got it. no maintenance, like no ongoing issues, higher rents than the average, which means you're getting better quality tenants in them because you're not renting them out at the bottom of the market. So you tend to get longer term people, higher income earners, that sort of thing. The property doesn't wear and tear as quickly with those sorts of tenants as well. So it's a build benefit the whole taste, way along. Build it larger, build a design that works in 2024, not 1984. Yeah. Um, I like it. And then I suppose like segueing from that, there was a third idea that we both had. Mm. Um, so we've sort of talked about like buying and renovating places to live in or buying places with great cash flow that um, or building places with great cash flow that get great growth. But there's a third idea, which is just sort of buying a high quality investment that's tenant ready, set and forget, could be brick and tile, could be weatherboard with the intent of literally just doing what works for our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents, which is just holding it for 30 years and taking it so that it doubles or triples over that time. Yeah. Um, which is what we do for a lot of clients as well. We've both done in our own portfolios. So like, what's that an ideal version of that in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide look like? I think that sort of property, ideally you want to be within 30 to 40 Ks of the closest CBD. You really just want to be catering to your everyday family um, demographics where you've got higher percentage of owner occupiers than renters in a suburb. You're buying the type of home that's always going to rent well to the majority of the demographics for the area. So like a good three or four bedroom home, one to two bathroom house on a good block of land that's got a backyard that people can see themselves living in. Mm -hmm. Something low maintenance, obviously we've already spoken about the renovation side of things. So something that doesn't require too much blood, sweat and tears. You're just getting something that over time you might need to clean carpets or replace carpets, give it a fresh coat of paint, upgrade some blinds, but realistically you're not doing any major improvements to the home. You're just focusing on something that's got good bones on a good quality, quiet, family friendly street, mm -hmm. close to amenities. So close to things like good schools, good transport routes like buses or trains, um, accessibility to the CBD, accessibility to shopping centres, um, close to working opportunities for most people in that area. Those sorts of things that are always going to deliver the fundamentals um, long term, as well as then a property that just ticks away and is mm. not requiring too much for you, that's then gonna rent well as well. So that rental income versus how much it costs to hold isn't this huge gap that's costing you a massive amount as an investor. You know, ultimately we want our investments as quickly as possible, yep. at least you and I do with three yeah. young kids. And like my living costs are high at the moment because I've got three <laughs> kids in crazy. private school. Yeah, exactly. Tutoring, sports, clothes. Like I do like going on holidays. I mm. like caravanning, like my home is nice. Like, yep. and there's a lot of people in Australia, the same as you and me yep. that aspire to living like I want to eat healthy food yeah. like I want to be able to take my kids to the movies in the school holidays like I yeah. want a good life not yeah. just like a basic life where, yeah. like that I have lived and I loved as well but like yeah. I, I want it to be a full life filled with meaningful experiences because yeah. that's what I value and so we want our properties to be covering themselves as quickly as possible yeah exactly and when you're buying well and early 
and then rents go up and debts come down over time, like it might be, you know, we've both had properties, yeah. I still do, that like cost me something. Yeah. But at about the five year mark, worst case scenario, like with this third strategy, we, you want it to be almost on par, either yeah. through the cash deposit you put down or the principal you paid or the rents going up over that time. Yeah, and I typically see it on that trajectory with most properties, like I know for myself, even that set and forget property that will become maybe development potential down the line, but it's taken with all the rate rises, even with the rent rises, I've held it for about five years now. It's really at that point, regardless of what happens, rents going up, rates going up or down, it's at that neutral position. Just crazy and for P and I at a 7% mark, because you're choosing to pay debt off with principal. Yeah. And, you know, interest rates historically for 50 years have sat at um, 6%. So they're 20%, 20 or not quite, 20, 15% above historical averages, which means yeah. they'll reset at some point down the line. Yeah, exactly right. And I think for a lot of our clients, that's the goal as well. They're buying something while they're in a decent income earning stage of life. A lot of people that work with us and choose to invest are taking advantage of earning high incomes, but trying to set themselves up for a little bit further down the line. So they just want something that they don't have to focus on. They're time poor. They don't want to be getting a call from their property manager all the time. So it's still got to be a good quality property in a good quality location where you're not getting dodgy tenants or issues all the time or high maintenance problems coming through from the um, inspection reports and that sort of thing that they can just hold, never really think about. And then all of a sudden it's, it's yeah, hopefully over time doubled in value or done some decent gains. I love that. You know, what would you say, like if I was sitting there listening to this and I <coughs> owned my own home, or maybe I was going to buy my first property, or maybe I owned a couple of properties, but I wanted to take a way more strategic approach. How would you decide from buying the house with the renovation potential so that you can make some money versus building something with great cash flow, tax benefits and growth versus just buying a setting and forgetting something. Like if I was sitting down with you and we weren't recording this and you were saying, what, what would you do if it was you in your position now? Me in my position now, I'm at a pretty low risk, low effort stage of life. So yeah. for other people that are in a position like I am, maybe just coming off the back of having kids, you're in a very needy time of life with them, high costs involved in my life, like like you said, with daycare and things like that, food, Energy's everything. Going into the family and being the best parent or the yeah. best partner you can be. I personally am really on board with just like buying something super high quality that just ticks away in the background. I don't have to think about for the next probably 10 to 15 years because of my stage of life right now. And I've just come off the back of like six years of renovating homes. I'm still the next phase of my renovation on my own home, own home starts next month. So things are still pretty crazy. I'm kind of keen to just like chill in that aspect. So if I'm talking to myself as an investor, low maintenance, low risk, follow the fundamentals, set and forget long term, suits me right now, but probably five years from now and five years ago, that would look very different. I'm really, really, really keen to explore the idea of buying land and building a cash flow positive or cash flow neutral opportunity because I can see such an advantage in the market right now for that type of opportunity. So if I was in a position to do so, I'd be jumping on that tomorrow. Yeah. But just with stage of life and everything, it's not necessarily a possibility, but I love the idea of that as well. Yeah, like if I think about the same thing for me, if you're in a stage individually or as an investor where you've got heaps of energy, it's the start of your journey. Mm. Like I've done 17 properties, you've done five. Collectively, we've bought more than a thousand properties for other people. Yeah. If you're coming in super high energy and you want to do things quickly in the next 15 years, yeah. then starting with a more aggressive, more like adding value strategy, not yourself. Like I'm not handy, your partner is, so you yeah. guys can do stuff yourself. I just outsource it to another company to do it yeah. or family to do it. Um, well, your Matt partner to do it. so much amazing <laughs> stuff for me, Matt. He's just built like a sick little outdoor workout area for me. Yeah. My decks, Matt. Yeah. Pretty much everything good in the Matt. All the cool stuff behind my kids' rooms. Um, but yeah, like if you're in a stage of life where you're like, you got the energy and this is super exciting and you want to go hard and you don't have kids or your kids are a little bit older, then fuck yeah, go hard. Like yeah. buy land, build things because you can. Like yeah. 
buy something that's set and forget for the next five years and then clean it up, come yep. back to it. Um, but if you're in a stage of life more like you are, like yep. really young family, really young kids, like massive demands on your energy levels, your mm. sleep's b- busted up at the moment, mm. or um, your income's a little bit lower than it would have been because now you can no longer work full time yep. and your partner doesn't want to do 60 hours a week anymore because he wants to be home with the kids. Yeah, exactly. Then maybe it is more set and forget with like a, a bit of a 20 to 30 year plan. Yeah. Um, and just knowing that like if you buy right, like the types of properties we buy for clients aren't in one category. It's like yeah. there's always upside through the market timing, through the ability to add value, even if it's a set and forget property now. Mm. We're buying with the intent knowing that in 15 years, by doing this 150k cleanup, there'll be 300, 400 grand of up equity upside. So it's exactly not right. necessarily like you have to choose one. But for me, I'm very, very, very much in the stage at the moment of simplicity after doing like seven or eight new Crazy. builds, subdivisions, Airbnbs, renos, and moving so much personally. I'm at the stage where like, unless it's got great location benefit with great land size, um, and I, I just like building again. Like I'm yeah. going back to that point now because I see the opportunity that if I was to do something again, it would be brand new jewel off with an oversized home. Yeah. Just because I like that product. I like income. I like tax benefits. I like growth. Yeah. hundred percent. Like it's just really exciting. I think there's so many approaches. Obviously we've just discussed a couple of them, but yeah. it's, um, yeah, really exciting. And I think the timing of everything right now and, yeah, the opportunities that are out there are really exciting. Yeah, so, you know, there's some, they're the three main ones that work, but obviously there's some cool stuff that we talk about off camera that both of us want to try in the future. Mm. One strategy that we like the idea of for more of those clients that are like earning a bit more, that have great equity and more time is like really high quality acreage renovations on new builds. Like that's a passion for you. Like yeah. if, tell me about that. Like what could that look like for someone in the future that has a combined income of 200K to a million bucks a year that's got a bit of equity or cash in the bank that wants to do something grander? I This is like my ultimate dream. 20 years from now, I just want to have an acreage property with this insane main residence on it, a couple of different dwellings that are potentially income producing. Like I have just this vision of, I don't know, hosting a wedding venue or a retreat venue or something like that. But right now, Acreage property in Sunshine Coast, at least, which is the market I'm familiar with, has been in pretty high demand, obviously off the back of COVID, people moving into state, people wanting that tree change, wanting a little bit more land, that sort of thing. I don't see the opportunity as fruitful as it could be, but in different parts of the cycle where there's that swing back to the cities, people wanting to downsize and that sort of thing, that if there's an opportunity to pick up a big block of land with a big estate style home on it that can be renovated. It might be older than 30 years in age. So you can add new kitchens, new bathrooms, landscape, new fencing, cool gates, all of that sort of thing. Like that's my kind of vision for the long term. And I think there's a really big upside potential in that sort of strategy if you look for the right sorts of blocks. The issue with these acreage blocks is there's massive amounts of flooding on them. A lot of the time, mm. if it looks too good to be true in price, it's probably because it is. Always is. <laughs> um, so there's usually some sorts of issues where you can't actually develop most of the property. Um, so that's a big one. Also other things like overlays around bushfire and that sort of thing. So you've just got to be super careful with what you pick up to what your vision is for the overall property but I just see like a huge opportunity in that aspect it's sort of what we've been able to do on our own home now it's like a small semi-rural kind of area and I'd like to just pick that up move it to another area that's even bigger and flatter and do it again down the line you know what this looks like in terms of numbers and obviously there's beautiful parts like Southern Highlands, Bowral mm. in New South Wales, Hunter Valley, like this can also work. I've just gone through like Geelong, yeah. Mornington Peninsula. Um, it can work like that in Queensland. It can work on the Gold Coast, Gold hinterland, Coast. Sunshine Coast, yeah. hinterland, Brisbane hinterland. So it's mainly an East Coast play just because driving around South Oz and WA recently, um, there's just unlimited acreage now without the population to really support mm you know, 
that person's it's a very particular buyer i suppose but like yeah. if you take this approach with a longer term strategy like let's say you could get into one of these properties for 1.5 mil yeah and then through your own work over a 15 year period maybe it's the place that you live um you end up spending five to seven hundred thousand dollars making it absolutely stunning or mm. even a million dollars so yeah. you're in it for two to 2.5 mil but then even you know if it's a 2.5 million dollar house today and it grows by five percent a year for 20 years or 15 years it's going to go from 2.5 to 5 mil yeah um and that type of opportunity for a savvy investor if you don't like the idea of heaps of different properties could just Mm. be like one golden goose that you hold for 30 years and in 30 years you end up selling it paying a bootload of tax to the government, which is cool. Like that's part of the cost of <laughs> yeah, the business. Exactly. You don't go to work without paying tax. You don't buy property yep. without paying it. Yep. And then you end up after tax and cost putting $3 million cash in the bank at retirement. Yep. And it's it's a life-changing decision if people don't want to own, like I like the idea of owning smaller, more Mm. more properties with more incomes yeah um because it's safer like if i lose one income in retirement from one property then i've got nothing yeah if i've got um four houses with four granny flats in retirement and i lose one i've lost one out of eight so it's a very very different risk position yeah but i love the idea of doing these projects in the future as well Mm. and creating something that is so beautiful that makes the world better for like a family in the future yeah i just like the idea of like doing it because i know (laughs) yeah me too but yeah, I don't have the cash to do it right now. Like it's expensive too. Like it's one of those. <laughs> it things. is. It's expensive, but yeah, it's definitely an exciting. Like it's a pretty cool opportunity to explore. It's um, where my head's at long term. <laughs> beautiful. Like, is there anything else you wanted to add or round out to today's combo about those three strategies? Um, I don't know. Like, I guess it's just sort of the proof is in the pudding. Like, these are things that we've been able to do in our own life that have worked over time. And like you said at the beginning is sort of, you've got changes in lifestyle, things may change where you've got to sell properties before you potentially thought you would, or you're changing up your portfolio. But if you're following the baseline fundamentals in any of those decision-making processes, whether you're buying and renovating, buying and building, buying lands and building, buying an established home that just sits around long-term, I think the fundamentals are all of always are important. So distance to city or water, size of land, location of that property within a suburb, those sorts of things, the demographics of a suburb, the potential growth long-term, the performance of that market in general and where it sits in the overall property cycle makes the most impact on the decision making to begin with Mm. but then building out your strategy around how active or how passive you want to be as an investor is really based on stage of life i think big time and i think that's important to note like you start where you are my first home or my first investment property was a 360k unit my second was a 213k home Mm. my third was a 310k home yeah and then i ratcheted it up you don't just end up with a million dollar home um you know it takes time to like learn the skills and the knowledge in this space it takes time to build the team of advisors it takes time to find like a buyer's agent Mm. partner coach mentor that you can trust it takes time to recognize that metro markets and major regional do better it takes time to know that you know i went and bought a whole bunch of 300 400 square meter piece of land and it wasn't till later on that i realized that if you can afford it 600 square meters to a thousand is going to do a lot better for you it took time to realize that buying 2k's from the beach or 30k's from the city was a great start but if you can afford 10k's to the city or walking distance to the beach then there's upside yeah and downside to that strategy so it's just figuring out where you are like I loved every single part of it I loved my 200k property yeah that I sold for 600k like seven years later after a reno like i loved the more expensive place that i was able to turn into something else for someone else like i love the portfolio that i've got now because it's a reflection of everything that i've learned yeah exactly and one right. of the benefits of like coming in with someone like us from day one is just you're not starting like you or not like you did but like i did with like no idea and just hoping to buy something close to home that makes sense yeah and hoping it works out um you're starting with like, here's the top 200 things that work. 
that you're not even going to know about until you buy your fourth property or yeah. fifth property or you've got 15 years of data. But from talking to four or 5,000 people like we both have and collecting like, oh, that went really bad in America for that guy for that reason or that didn't work in Venezuela or that, didn't, that worked in Hong Kong, that didn't work in Singapore or this really works in Sydney but not in Brisbane. Yeah. You start to collect these ideas about what works and then you study history like we both have and it's like, shit, there is like a very, very, very clear way and I don't think without taking on massive risks, there's a better way to do it than these three strategies personally. Agreed, yeah. No, I'm so grateful to have you back on board. <laughs> um, you guys will be hearing more of Crystal and her experiences. No one in our business, and I don't think anyone at her age in Australia at her age has bought as much as you have. So, um, yeah, I'll let's just run that with that. To people <laughs> as well. Yeah, and no, I'm excited. And yeah, good to chat again. It's been nice to get back on here, and maybe next time I'll feel a bit more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> If you're thinking about buying an investment property in the next three to six months, then the team and I at Pumped On Property would love to offer you a one-on-one -on -one strategy session. To book the session, all you have to do is go to www.pumpedonproperty.com and click that free strategy session button. Now in the session, we'll talk about exactly where you are right now, we'd like to be longer term and educate you deeply on the Australian property market. You can then take that information and go and absolutely smash it on your own or potentially become one of the small number of clients that we work with each month. Either way, we look forward to continuing to help you build your property portfolio with confidence on your journey to financial freedom.